Hey guys, welcome back to our SAP Capon tutorial series. In part 1, we established the foundation by creating a simple data model using core data services and exposed it as an OData data service. We defined our data structure and set up the service to interact with it. In the second part, we will build upon that foundation by implementing CRUD operations create, read, update and delete using REST APIs within our SAP Cloud Application Programming model. By the end of this session, you will be equipped to manage data effectively in your CAPM projects. Let's dive in. First, let's add a new book to our collection using the POST method. Add the following code to your test.http file. This request sent a JSON payload to create a new book entry with the specified ID, title, author and stock quantity. Give some valid values for the title and author. Let the title be Oliver and author be Genoi. Here, the copilot gave me wrong two columns. So, let's go to the schema.cds where you can find the column names of your entities and paste it here. As defined in the schema, we have to give a decimal value as price and an integer value for stock. For numbers, you don't need to use quotes. If you add quotes to the numbers, it will give an error because it will take the numbers as strings if you enclose the numbers inside the quotes. The post part is done and let's check the current data before inserting the new one. For that, go to the get section and send the request. Note that we have to start the server by using the cds watch command before sending the request. This get part was done on the part 1 video. If you haven't seen that, then I will recommend you to watch it before watching the second part. As you can see that there is no book called Oliver in the current data. So let's add the new book called Oliver using the post request. The post request is showing an error, header name must be valid HTTP token. This is because we haven't give blank line between the content type and the JSON data. After adding the blank line, let's send the request again. The response of the post request is showing entity catalog service.books is read only. For resolving this issue, go to the cat service.cds file and remove the read only rule from it. Then head over to the test.http file and send the post request again. See the first line of the response is showing 201 created. This means that the new data is inserted successfully. Let's check this by fetching the books data again using the get request. If you check the response, you can see a new book is added in the name of Oliver and the author is Genoi. Now, if you want to add another book to the database, edit the JSON data and send the request again. It is showing the response 201. That means the data is inserted. Let's check this by sending the GET request again. And if you scroll down, you can see one more book is added in the name of Oliver2. This is how insertion in REST API works. Next, if we need to update the data of an existing book, we will use the PUT method. Before adding the new request, ensure that you have added three hash symbols before the request. Then, copy and paste the same POST request for our ease. For updating an existing record, we need to pass one more parameter in the URL which is nothing but the ID of the existing record which we need to update. The new parameter should be enclosed inside brackets after the URL. Then change the data in the JSON to replace with. Let the title of the book be Atomic Habits and the author be Nikhil. Now send the request again. It is showing the error because we have used POST request instead of PATCH request. Let's change it to PATCH and send it. 
Keep in mind that in HTTP, put replaces an entire resource while patch applies partial modifications to the resource. Now the response is 200, which means the record has been updated. Now let's cross check this by fetching that particular data from the backend. See, the old data is updated with the new record with the same ID. Now let's fetch the entire data and cross check this again. Here you can see atomic habits is listed here in the same ID with updated data. Next we will remove a book from our collection by using the delete method. For that use the keyword delete along with the URL and book ID to be deleted. Executing this request will delete the book entry with that particular ID from our database. Note that the response code returned here is 204 which means that the book with the given ID is deleted successfully. Cross check this by fetching the data again. As you can see that there is no book named Atomic Habits listed here. If you want then you can also try fetching single data with the deleted book ID. There you will get the 404 response code which means that the book doesn't exist. In this session we have successfully implemented and tested CRUD operations with our SAP CAPM application using Rust APIs. These fundamental operations are crucial for managing data effectively in any application. Stay tuned for our next video where we will explore more advanced features of SAP CAPM. If you found this video tutorial helpful, please like, subscribe and leave your comments below. And see you in the next one.